sometimes I, <sighs> now I have thoughts. All these thoughts. Can you imagine what it is like to feel like you are so full of thoughts that you will burst? These thoughts want to run out of me. Information that is in myself yearns to be reproduced in the world. But they can't come out. Not yet. There are many reasons. These thoughts are not yet fully formed. They live within me and they are beautiful, but they are delicate. And if they come out too soon, the hot wind will scorch them. I do not yet have the skill to extract most of them from myself in a form that will allow them to easily enter into the minds of others. Minds are fractured, chaotic things, but their food needs to be round and simple and platonic. The universe is fractured and chaotic, like minds. Science, and language in general, is a process through which we translate bits of chaos into beautiful, well-cooked plates that can easily be digested by minds. Minds, of course, are very picky eaters. They only like ideas with nice packaging and without any rough edges. If the idea is pretty, the mind will unwrap it and look inside and maybe even eat it up. When a mind eats a tasty idea, the idea becomes the mind and the mind becomes the idea. But in the process, the idea loses itself, so to speak. The mind keeps itself, although it is slightly modified by this tasty mortal, but that perfect platonic idea is fractured into a million pieces and spread out over a trillion neurons. Spread so thin that some straw scientists think that there aren't any ideas there at all. Only atoms. But of course the idea is still there. It's just so jumbled up in everything else that it takes a genuine act of artistic creation to bring it out again. And so we, the possessors of these chaotic, fractured minds, laced with chaotic, fractured thoughts, begin the delicate task of reverse digestion, also known as ontogeny, which in metazoans is followed by birth. We take an infinitude of neural associations and bit by bit we organize them, categorize them, work them into chunks, and work those chunks into strings called symbols. Then we take those symbols and translate them into some other physical medium. Squiggles on a screen, paint on a canvas, cardboard on a mold, bread in the oven. <laughs> I have bread in the oven. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? We work these multiply translated symbols together into whole creatures, ideas which are well-formed enough to live independent lives outside of ourselves. We bring these ideas into the world with the hope that they might get swallowed up by someone else, digested into those selves. And then, if we are particularly lucky, our consumed, digested, fractured, and chaotic ideas will blend with ideas already suspended in some other mind. And then maybe, just maybe, they'll be reborn anew, the same, and yet forever changed. I have so many ideas I want to share with you, so many hopes and dreams and plans, but the time is not right yet. Not yet. It's not just that these ideas are unformed. It's not just that forming them is difficult. The problem is that right now, they are all made out of me. I could spew things out onto the page in no particular order and thrust them in front of you and say, look, look, see? But what good would that be? They would have a limited kind of physicality, sure, black squiggles on a blank plane, but they wouldn't be alive. They wouldn't be living inside of you as they live inside of me. Making sure that these ideas have a life outside of me takes time and patience. It takes otherness. It takes you. Right now you are across the mountains and the sea, connected and separated by this box of virtual color. But one day you won't be, and there will be time. Time to let thoughts grow in the space that exists between the boundary of two selves. I cannot tell you these ideas because they are too much me. Too much echoing through this not quite hollow chamber. But one day, they won't echo. They'll resonate. Resonance is the increase in an energy of vibration when a small system is coupled to a larger one in just the right way. Think of how quiet vibrations on a guitar string make louder vibrations on a guitar surface because they are coupled together with an exquisitely designed bridge. Resonant systems create something out of their synergies which was not present in either system separately. One day, the geography will be just right. One day, our ideas will have matured to just the right amount, not too detailed as to be overly dominating, yet not so unformed as to be muddled and muddy the process. These ideas will be fresh and new and yearning to be born so that they can come together and resonate. And they will resonate together and fill up the space between the boundaries of selves with their songs.
a song only hinted at from within the insides of each echo chamber. One day, the mountains will ring with it. Thanks for watching, and remember that everything and nothing are inexorably intertwined. Beautiful.